Hey friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I have a new layout for Hip Kit Club for Mixed Media Monday, and I'm going to be using the new July 2020 kits, and they're so pretty. Lots of Dear Lizzie, and these sticker sheets just jumped right out at me. They screamed summer, and so I was instantly inspired to make a summer layout, which are my favorite. And so I really liked the pinks and the greens and that mix of navy blue. And so those were the colors that just sort of inspired me. So I, I went through everything and picked out some papers, some of the pocket life cards that had pink, navy blue, and that soft orange color. And then I'm going to have some green on it because there's going to be leaves in the flowers but here's my picture it's a very bright uh, pool picture of my oldest daughter from several years ago and there's lots of blue in it so I think what I'm gonna do is start with this big chunk of pink on this Dear Lizzie paper and my thought was I wanted to have a big chunk of it up at the top and it's a nice contrasting color to the photo because there's a lot of blue in the picture so I'm gonna just rip it I like uneven messy torn edges and then I thought kind of underneath that I would have a nice little torn strip of the navy blue and white striped but I, I went through some other papers first just to see if anything else jumped out at me and I did want to incorporate some of the navy into this uh, layout and I don't even know why I just on that sticker sheet when I saw that navy sticker next to the pink flower I don't know I just really love how that looked and so I wanted to incorporate some navy blue onto this page. Even though it's a bright summery layout, I'm gonna have that color on the page in a couple spots. So I'm just gonna start out by playing around and trying to situate things. I wanted to use this feeling the vibe on this Pocket Life card as my main title. So I'm gonna fussy cut this out and play around with it, see how I wanna organize it. Not quite sure if I wanna do stacked words or what, but that's kind of where I'm going. So that's going to leave the bottom half of this page white. And this is just a sheet of the textured white cardstock that's in the cardstock kit. And I'm going to coat it with clear gesso because I'm going to do way too much mixed media at the bottom here. And I wish I would have used thick, smooth white cardstock because I go a little overboard and this paper winds up being a little thinner than normal. But it works out. It's fine. Uh, the gesso, you know, makes this background possible in every way. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I get there. But all I'm doing here is gluing down the top portion here. And you can kind of see now what I was talking about with having the navy paper just kind of peek underneath the pink. Okay, so I'm going to start to build the picture here. I'm going to add some white tissue paper behind it just to start the layering process behind it. I like using tissue paper. It just gives a little subtle border around the edges and I like that it's crooked and torn and not perfect. And then I'm going to start in with some orange and go with that pocket life card that has the white dots on it. And I'm going to use that as my first layer behind the picture. And it's just going to be a little bit of orange showing around the edges. So it's it's not a, a big chunk of orange, but it still gives the illusion of that color and that's kind of like to where like okay what that is where I like to start with my colors is try to get a little bit of each color on the page so I've got my pink I've got the navy and I've got the orange and then I'm going to use that as a way to build all the other colors once I start to embellish so where the photo is going to go I wanted to kind of fade out a little bit of the pink background just to give it a little bit of depth and interest so I pulled out my white gesso here and I'm going to scrape it on, use my finger just to kind of create this white haziness behind the picture. Uh, and this is just going to help the photo stand out a little bit more, I think. It's nothing drastic. It just gives a little bit of depth to the pink paper because it is just solid pink and there's no patterns on it or anything. The background is dry and now we're going to add all the color. This is going to be the start of a hot mess and we're just going to dig right in and start it here. Now I pulled out the ink pads that we got in last month's color kit. Uh, if you got the June color kit then you got these three ink pads from Prima and this is the orange one and I just scraped it right onto the background and then I'm using my water brush to activate it and basically turn it into watercolor and that's where my 
background is going to begin. So I thought I've got a lot of pink and I've got that navy blue. Let's go with orange. You know, I've already got a lot of pink. I don't want a dark navy blue background. So we're going to go with orange. And I didn't want to add any of that blue color uh, that's in the picture because there's plenty of blue in the picture. So I, I want all the other colors to contrast. So we're going to start with this orange. And you can already see that the paper is buckling and warping. A lot of people always ask me, does your paper buckle when you use it? And it definitely does, especially if it's textured cardstock like this. And this is why I was wishing I would have used the smooth, thick white cardstock because this definitely um, does buckle because it's not made for water. I mean, this is not watercolor paper. It's not meant for this. And I keep adding more and more because you'll see as I go it's it never gets like I want it to get so I keep having to add more and this poor paper I felt like it was saying stop stop <laughs> I'm drowning but in the end it works out you know I just have to let it dry and it will all work out and the paper does warp you know and sometimes you just have to flatten it out and it's okay it, it will all work out in the end Okay, at this point, I wanted to bring in some of the navy. And as soon as I squirted that down, I thought, oh gosh, what have I done? Now that blue color is a shimmers spray that we got a long time ago in a color kit. It's called Seize the Day. I can't even remember. I think it might have been 2018. Um, but we did get that in a shimmers kit, or in a, excuse me, in a hip kit color kit. And it is a shimmers. But it's the perfect blue to match the blue that I've got going here. So I thought I wanted to add a little bit of the blue to the background, not super dark, but just hints of orange, hints of pink. Oh, I didn't even tell you about the pink. The pink that I just dripped on there a few minutes ago was from the May kits, I believe. That was the art philosophy. We got three colors of the, the inks and the little droppers. And so that was the pink that I used because it's a perfect pink to match the pink in the paper. So that's why I added that in. And you can kind of see how this is all blending together, which I like, which is what I was going for. I wanted you to be able to see some orange, see some blue, and see some pink. And, you know, when you add water to it, it's all going to start to blend and kind of spread together, which is fine. I'm just trying to not make the blue and the orange blend together because that creates yuck. So we're very, very carefully doing this. And this is just the first coat. So this poor paper. Yeah. But we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I love how it looks. That's not the problem. And uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep working. So far, so good. Let's see what happens next in the saga that is this mixed media madness. Here's where I ran into wanting to add more. I put the title back onto it and I felt like feeling just blended into the background too much because it's got orange and white. So I put it aside and started to go through embellishments and try to figure out what I wanted to use around the picture. Cause I wanted the background to dry at this point. I just wanted to kind of give myself a break from working on that. So what I'm gonna do is take some of these stickers and these stickers are really, really awesome. They're kind of like a, a vellum, but you can kind of see through them. So in order for them to stay true to their color, they need a white background. And so I'm gonna just stick them onto some scrap cardstock here that I've already stamped on and used in a previous layout. And then I'm gonna cut these out. And so they're gonna become little die cuts basically. Now I can move them around and put them wherever I want. Because if you were to stick these stickers directly onto something colored, they're going to change color and you won't be able to see it as much. But that's kind of the idea. I'm going to tuck some of those embellishments around the picture. And now we're going to come back to the background. And you can kind of see when I put the word feeling back on top of the area right there, it, it didn't stand out enough. It just blended in because it kind of was the same color as the background. So here we go. Round two of adding lots of liquid to this I think I can, I think I can background here. I went back to the pink, the art philosophy, and I really like how that looks. I think that that's going to really make the feeling die cut stand out. See, now you can see it. But yeah, it's, it's an awful lot of water, 
but I'm trying to be very delicate and gentle <laughs> with this paper because it's struggling. But I like how it's looking. Now it's going to stand out, and I like that. Because uh, feeling the vibe, all three of those are different colors, and I wanted them all to, to stand out. So I'm, I'm going to give the bottom part another little rest here, and we're going to add some white splatters to the top part, just the pink part. And I love to do this on bold colored card stocks. Uh, I just watered down some white acrylic paint and use a brush to splatter it down. And I think this is the, the quickest and the best way to get white splatters because it's not going to just disappear when it dries because it's acrylic paint and it looks awesome I think and you're gonna be able to see these little splatters all around the edges of the picture it dries pretty quick too because it's not too thick okay the top is done the back or the back the bottom is still wet but we're gonna see how this looks so far um, I'm deciding that I'm going to add some flowers here. This is from, oh, uh, what collection is this? A Pebbles collection, I think. And it's got these really cute, bright flowers on it. And I'm going to fussy cut out a couple of those to tuck in. And I thought that I might tuck one kind of underneath the bottom of the picture to kind of overlap the feeling part of the title. Again, to make it stand out. And I like how that looks. So I'm going to go with that. And it's going to, again, kind of add something behind the title to where it's more visible. And I'm going to come back in with all those little, the, the, the little flowers, the bird, the flamingo. There's a lot of flamingos on those sticker sheets, and they are adorable. So I can't wait to use more of those. I have a feeling that all of my layouts this month are going to be summery because there's just so many summer things. And I got a sneak peek of the cut files coming for this month and they are all summery and adorable and I'm just very inspired to make summer pages. See all the flamingos there? Okay, so what's next? I'm gonna repeat what I did earlier. I felt like I needed more die cuts. So I'm gonna make more die cuts out of these little stickers like I did earlier and then just cut them out. I'm gonna use another flamingo and I wanted another orange sticker. So I added another orange sticker and I really like those orange sunglasses so I'm going to go for those as well. All right, round two of die cuts. I'm going to tuck some more things in. Nothing's glued down at this point. Everything here is just an audition for all of these spots. Not quite sure. I love it. I found this die cut that says summer in these big, fluffy, puffy type font. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that piece of that pocket life card for another pop of that navy blue up at the top. And I found some purple, not a lot of purple, but my daughter's swimsuit, it's a rainbow swimsuit, but at the top of it, it's that pinkish purple color. So I thought that it would be cool if I added in a little bit of purple since I found that purple flower. And then the E in that summer die cut is also purple. So I thought, okay, if I'm gonna have one purple thing, I need to have a couple purple things. So I'm gonna cut these letters apart and add it to my title. I'm going to jazz up a few of these to make them match the colors a little bit more by just running the ink pads from last month's color kit over some of these letters. So my title is going to be nice and big. It's going to be feeling, okay, it's backwards now. It says feeling summer, the vibe. That doesn't make sense. I'm going to change that. <laughs> How did I not read that? I can't read? Come on. Feeling summer, the vibe. Yeah, if that's my title, then I need some serious help. I will fix that. No worries. It's not glued down. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all, I tell you what, you never know what's going through this crazy brain of mine. I can't even put a title together anymore. Who am I? Here we go. Back to the background. We're going to add in some more navy this time. So we're using the water brush. We're using that shimmers blue that I used earlier. Except this time I'm going to just spray it on my desk and dab it in very lightly with as little water as possible because at this point my poor background yeah I was very surprised that it held up as well as it did even with the gesso I even come in with a little piece of plastic here to do some splattering I don't know what was going through my mind at that point I just wanted this background to to be finished. Here's where I realized that I had uh, mixed the title up earlier. 
I thought, oh, wait a minute, this looks different. Yeah, that's because you have it in the right order now. <sighs> okay, so now it's going to be correct. But I can't put the word summer down yet because of all that blue. It's still wet. So I'm going to keep working on it. Oh, man. I hope this layout isn't giving you a headache because it's giving me one watching me do this painful background. Um, <laughs> the things I do for backgrounds. Oh, man. I spend way too much time on these things. What am I going to do now? I'm going to come in with more orange. We're going to do more on this background. Yep, I felt like I'd covered up too much of the orange. So we're going to scrape the ink pad back onto the sides that have dried and add more orange. Someone tell me to stop. I need someone here in person watching me do this live to say, stop, just stop. Because there's no one here to do that. And I just obviously don't know when to stop. <laughs> I just, I just keep going. I just keep going. But I, I have faith that it's going to turn out. And I hope you guys like the end result because I, I think it does turn out very pretty. And I really do like how it's looking. I like the blend of all the colors. I've successfully managed to not make an ugly brown with the orange and the blue. So that's a positive, right? Give me some credit for that. With all this mess, I, I, I don't have any brown on there. So I'm kind of proud for that. I think the background is done. I think it's done. I let it dry for a while. I flattened it out. I put a heavy paper pad on it to get rid of a lot of the warping. And now I think we're ready to move on from that background that, oh my gosh, almost 17 minutes in. All right, let's glue some things down. I've got my little edge distressor there to make sure that all of the, the things behind the picture are distressed. Glue all the layers down. Let's get the title right. Let's get all the birds and flowers, flamingo into place. And I like that I'm going to overlap all those little pieces onto the photo on the left. Because if you look at this photo, this is a great photo to, oh, we're going back to the background. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, no. I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what I was just saying. This is a good example of a photo that allows you to overlap things onto it because I have all this open space on the left and so the bird and the flamingo are looking at my daughter. I love to do that. I love when things work out that way. So I, I felt like I'm, I'm not covering up her face. There's nothing important right there on the edge of the photo. It's a good, a good place to, to overlap. And then I'm going to overlap the pink flower just a little bit on the right, right by her face, but not close to where it's going to you know, overlap her face or anything. I think I got the title right this time. I got a little flower cluster down there at the bottom. I'm going to have another little flamingo down there uh, intermingled with the title. I'm going to, what did I just do? I added some purple thread because I felt like I needed another pop of purple since I've got the flower on the left. Then you come down. I've got the E in summer and then you go back up to create sort of a, a V shape. And then I've got the purple thread so up, down, up, the three points of purple. And then there's the extra purple that's in her swimsuit. So I feel like there's enough purple going on. I did want to bring in a little more of the navy blue. So that's going to be another color of thread that I'm going to put kind of underneath this big pink flower here. And I felt like that, that was a good place to put that because it's a nice dark contrast to the background. So I'm going to get that under there. I'm going to start to glue here shortly. Right now, things are still moving all over the place. But, yeah, I think this is kind of where it's going to go. Yep, we're going to start to glue now. There's the pink flower to the right. I've got an orange flower there. All those little bits and pieces over here to the left side. I'm going to get those glued down. And remember, those were stickers. And I'm able to move those around because I put those on uh, white cardstock first. So if you want to use those stickers, but you're not quite sure where, highly recommend doing that. That way you can move them around and they don't, you know, stick right down. So I'm going to glue the picture down. Takes me a while, but I get everything, most everything glued down, uh, except for the title. I've got the top part done. I, I'm going to glue down summer, but then I'm going to wind up peeling it back up 
and popping that off the page. So that's what I did here. Of course it dried, so I had to be very careful. You can see where it ripped the background, but you're not even going to see that because these are going to go right back where they went. Glue them back down. So now summer is a little bit raised. I wish I would have popped up the entire title, but the rest of it is glued straight down, and it's okay. I like that summer is popped up, and it's a different font, so I think it looks it looks cool. The little flamingo is going to go right there in the spot by the, and then I'm going to glue down this little flower cluster. Oh, we have a visit from Paige. She's going to stop by and say hi. She's leaning in to give me a kiss, and she wants to say hi, so here she comes. <laughs> yep, she just likes to lay on my layouts from time to time. She's so funny. But yeah, there's all her... <laughs> yeah, she's... <laughs> Sorry. We had to have a little kissing session there. Anyway, moving on, moving on. What else is going to happen in this video? Who knows? Who knows? It's so long and so crazy. But I didn't want to cut out any of this background because it was such a saga. Anyway, title. Flowers. Thread. Almost done. Blue thread. Added in the light color blue thread down there at the bottom underneath the flower cluster. Because I felt like I needed some of that light blue down there. Going to glue that down. And yes. The title, not the title, the background looks so different when you add everything back on top of it. Um, you would never know that it took me 10 years to make it. And I don't even know why it, it took me that long, but, you know, I don't know. Some of the most easy, not almost say easy, but when you look at a layout and you think, okay, there's really not that much mixed media on that layout, those are usually the ones that took me the longest. And then the ones that look so complicated, like there's so much stuff on it, those are the ones that didn't take me long at all. It makes no sense. I have no idea. Every layout is its own journey. And here I go adding more stickers. These are from Maggie Holmes. And there are little orange ones on there, little pink ones. And I'm just going to stick these right onto the paper. They're just little subtle details. Oh, we're not done. Here comes some more. These are bigger and they're orange. I'm going to add in a couple of those in a couple spots. One at the top, I think. I try to put it on the side, but it's going to go up to the top. And I like how the orange stickers look on the pink background. So I didn't I didn't back these with the white card stock because I like how it looked as they were. A couple of word and phrase stickers in a couple spots. There are a ton of stickers this month. Uh, there's the a pack of exclusive die cuts. Here's some more Maggie Holmes. A ton of those little phrase and word stickers in three cute colors. I'm going to add in a couple of those. Um, in a couple spots and then I fussy cut this little sun from a pocket life card I just I kept looking at it and I thought you know what we need a sun up at the top and I love how that looks because it's the perfect pop of that orangey yellow color right there up at the top and it's gonna run off the page last thing I'm gonna do well almost the last thing I'm gonna do is add in my journaling I'm gonna use my gold metallic pen because this is just kind of got a gold vibe I don't know so I just decided to pull out the Jen Hadfield gold glitter spray that we got back in the Christmas kits I think back in November and splatter some of that around and then I'm going to add in some more uh, light blue splatters from the ink pad from last month I felt like I just needed some more light blue down at the bottom and then finally oh that's it that's the final layout I love how this turned out even though it was quite a journey to get that background, you would never know that that background took that long. I mean, come on. It's really not even that complicated, but I don't know. Who knows? It's done. I love it. I love all these colors. I love the mix of everything. I love this big old title, the stickers, the bright colors. The kits are amazing. I hope you guys are excited to get them because when I opened everything, I just went all googly eyed because everything was so cute and so summery and bright. And I cannot wait to make another layout using the July kits and I can't wait to use the cut files so make sure you keep an eye on the cut files on the website because they are coming soon and they are awesome so let me know if you guys have any questions thank you for sticking with me with me for 25 ish minutes for this crazy layout and I will see you guys in my next video I hope you have a great week thanks for watching and I'll see you then